Welcome. In this tutorial, we will learn how to perform a simple SIR model in a closed population, where we assume that there are no beds, deaths, or migration happening in the population. So before we get into the coding, what is an SIR model? An SIR model is an abbreviation for Susceptible Infected Recovered Model. The SIR model is used to model infectious diseases with immunity. In that case, you can group the individuals within the population into three classes. Susceptibles, which represent the individuals within the population that are capable of getting the disease. You can also have the infected, which represents the individuals who have been infected with the disease. And lastly, the recovered, which as the name implies, the individuals who have recovered from the disease. A typical example of a disease you can model with SIR is chicken pox, which after recovery, individuals gain immunity. Okay, now that was a little introduction and we can get into the differential equations that we would use in the model. The first is ds dt, which we would use to model how the number of individuals who are susceptible to getting the disease change over time. And this depends on the proportion of susceptible who gets infected. Here, the beta represents the rate at which disease transmission is occurring. S represents the initial proportion of the population that are susceptible, and I represents the initial proportion of the population that are infected. We will also need a differential equation for the IDT to model the number of individuals who are infected over time. And this depends on the proportion of susceptible who gets infected minus the proportion of infected people that recover from the disease. The new variable introduced in this equation is the gamma, and it represents the recovery rate. We will also need a differential equation for the number of individuals who recover over time. The R over the T is dependent on the proportion of infected people who recover from the disease. Let's see how we can model this in R. The packages we will need here are Dissolve, R shape two, and GG plot two. Dissolve is a package in R that is used for solving differential equations. R shape two is a package in R that allows you to transform data between the long and the wide formats. And ggplot2 is another package in R that is used for plotting graphs. So the first thing is to call the packages from your library. Please note that if the packages are not installed, you cannot call them from the library. To install the packages, you would simply use install.packages. You put the name of the package in it. I already have the packages installed, so I do not need to install them again. Okay, after installing the packages, the first thing to do is to define the state values. And the state values given here are the initial proportion of infected, the initial proportion of susceptible, as well as the initial proportion of recovered. So I would run this chunk of code. And the next thing is to define your parameters. The parameters in our differential equation is beta which represents the infection rate and gamma, which represents the recovery rate per day. So I would run this chunk of code as well. 
I also need to define the time frame that I want to model this disease. And here I am looking at this over a 70 day period and I am taking time steps per day. After that, you write the function that returns a list of the S, the I, the R. And within that function, you include the differential equations that is used to model the S, the I, and the R. So that is what I have here. And I'm going to run this function as well. After running the function and stating your state values as well as your parameters, you include them in the differential equation function. I would run this as well. So when you look at the SIR data, this is what you should get. It gives you columns for S, I, and R. And using the melt function, we are combining the S, I, and R columns by time. So let's view how that also appears. So you get one column that gives you all the values for S, I, and R for each day. Once we have that, we can start plotting. The first plot we are going to do here is plotting the proportion of infected over time. And this is what we get at time zero, there are no infected, but over the time period, the proportion of infected increases and then they decline as well. The next plot we look at is the proportion of susceptible over time. And we can see that at time zero, we have all the entire population is susceptible to getting the disease. And over time, the number of susceptibles decline because the number of infected are increasing. We would also plot recovered over time. We also see here that at time zero, there are no recovered because there are no infected. But as the number of infected increases and recovery occurs, the proportion of recovered increases. Let's visualize both the infected and susceptible and recovered together. Here we see that at the start, the proportion of infected is one. So the entire population is susceptible to getting the disease and there are no infected or recovered. When the proportion of susceptibles decline, which means that the individuals in the population are becoming infected. So the infected increases. And when the infected increases and some recover, the recovery rate increases as well. And when the individuals who were infected move into the recovery class, we see that the proportion of the recovery is increasing and the proportion of the infected would now decline. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to post that in the chat. Thank you and see you in the next video.